Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast. Now we talk a lot about fitness on here and being able to educate on different topics, but today's episode is going to kind of be about our fitness goals, not kind of, it is going to be about our fitness goals. So we're going to dive into what Alex Austin and I's current fitness goals are right now, as well as some different things when it comes to goal setting and being able to set your own fitness goals. So a question I want to ask to both of you is, do you think it's important to set goals? Absolutely. I I think that setting the goal is going to be important just to give you a direction in terms of what you're wanting to accomplish. If you don't have goals in place, if you don't have a schematic plan to a degree situated, I think that you just kind of aimlessly move through space and find yourself in a situation where it's very easy to get discouraged and, and put yourself in a situation where you're not accomplishing kind of these ghost goals that you have in your mind or these expectations that you put in place where you're stuck in comparison and those different things. So having a goal and having kind of benchmarks to hit along the way, I think are very important. Yeah, I think as far as goal setting goes, I'm, I'll, I'll kind of deviate a little bit from what Alex said. And I think it's really important, especially if you're someone that doesn't naturally gravitate towards that thing you have a goal in, you absolutely need a goal and a plan and a way to get to where you're trying to go, right? I, I think if you don't, you're going to end up walking or going down a path towards a different horizon than you're expecting to go toward. And so, yeah, I I think that if you're someone that doesn't naturally gravitate towards fitness, especially, then you need to have a fitness based goal to really help you get to where you're trying to go. And again, there's people around or there's plans online, but there's people around to help you do that if you're unaware of how to set those goals. And we'll talk about it today, I'm sure, as Sue has some great things prepared. So um, yeah, I I think I think that's a big thing. Yeah. And I think a big thing with goals is that it gives you that vision and it's something that you can chart and realize. And you've heard us say on the podcast before, what gets measured gets managed. And so if you don't set goals for what you're doing, then you can just become a plaything of coincidence and you're just kind of bouncing around and not knowing what direction to go in. And that also lines up when we've talked before about effort and expectation of being able to maybe you have these goals that you haven't really fine tuned. Um, Maybe you're just like, I want to be in better shape. But because you haven't put that goal down and really made a plan around it, because a goal is only a goal once you make a plan for it. A goal isn't just a dream that you kind of say out loud. So you have to be able to make a conscious effort towards that goal. And so when it comes to effort and expectation, that also goes in line with goal setting. And then if you've listened to the podcast when we talk about um, the comparison trap and delayed gratification, those are things that you can fall into if you aren't making things clear for yourself. And then you're bouncing back and forth, like I said, and being that plaything of coincidence. So being able to to talk about goals and how it comes to setting goals, we want to think about SMART goals, which is likely something that you have heard before, the acronym, and it stands for Specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And using this guideline is going to be really, really helpful because if you say something, and we were chatting a little bit before this podcast started recording, and Alex said his goal was to be less fat. Now that is a great goal, but it is also something that if you just say that and you don't really have a specific, measurable, um, timely plan in place, then how do you know if you've reached that goal? And that can also make it harder to reach that goal because you don't have different benchmarks along the way. And it's kind of got you set up in a place where, again, you're not measuring it, so you're not managing it. And it's this open-ended situation where you might not have a lot of direction, which again, goals give you that direction. So being able to go over our current fitness goals, but before we do, I thought it'd be really helpful to go over some of the past goals that we've had when it's related to either fitness or life. It doesn't have to be just fitness, but being able to say some of those big goals that we remember in our lifetime. So Austin, what do those look like for you? Uh, Physically, I mean, competing obviously sticks out. Um, as far as kind of the biggest physical goal I've ever had continuously uh, for years and years and years. So uh, competing absolutely was one. And that was one that 
gave me, even reflecting back on it now, it, it gave me so much structure and daily purpose towards a towards a goal that I was working toward. And like every decision was worked through the filter of does this get me closer to where I want to be? And again, you may be in a position where you need that, you don't need that type of or that level of accountability towards something. But if you are, then setting a goal like that, you don't have to step on stage, but like setting a goal to that level, I, I think is a wise decision on your end because you have to become accountable to those daily actions that you're you're performing throughout the day. Uh, intellectually, out of college, uh, writing the book, all of those things were just these out, for me, outlandish goals that took a daily, a, a massive daily effort to tick off boxes every single day towards every single deadline, towards every single due date or assignment date or whatever. And, you know, when you look back on it, it, it never really seems as hard as you make it out to be. Um, so you make this thing out to be so difficult and so outlandish and so unrealistic for yourself. And going through those daily actions and having a daily purpose towards reaching that goal and doing it in bite-sized chunks each and every day or week in and week out, it really becomes this thing by the end where you're just like, like, yeah, that was hard, but I could do it again. Like it's not, it wasn't that hard. I've definitely done more challenging things in my life. So yeah, I think those are my physical and, and intellectual goals that I've had in the past that have come out on top because of daily efforts and, and just sticking to it. I would say a lot of mine prior to being in my early twenties would be all sports related. So it would have been navigating through high school sports and playing varsity sports and those different things, which were accomplished. And then, uh, going on to play college baseball. And it was interesting because baseball was all of my life up until that point. And once I, cause I knew from a talent perspective, I was not going to be a major league baseball player from the get. So in that, once I got to college, it was kind of like, eh, this is cool. And I'm glad that I've done this for what was two years. Um, but I found myself in a situation that was like, it, it's cool, but I, I realized that this isn't what it's kind of cracked out to be. And I realized that past this point isn't built for me. So it was something that I was able to kind of navigate away from, but it was a goal that I'm still very grateful that I accomplished as well as it wouldn't have, I wouldn't be in the situation that I am without it type situation. So that's cool. Um, from a, a fitness standpoint, we've talked about this on the podcast a, a billion times. Um, I was painfully small. <laughs> very skinny. And so just adding muscle tissue was something that has chronically been a goal for me and something that's just consistent daily effort. I'm sure that I will not reach the level of, of muscle tissue that I have always wanted per se. It's always going to be just a little bit more and a little bit more muscle tissue in this area and this area and those different factors. I'll be able to nitpick it till the end of time, I'm sure. Um, but as well as building physique development, physique development was something that, and still is to this day, it's something where, um, from the very beginning, it was just daily tasks that needed to be accomplished and continuing to grow physique development is something that we're very focused on as a whole. And it really just comes down to the, the daily action, doing all the check-ins, giving uh, quality feedback, getting results with the clients and those things, especially when we were first starting. And I find this to be very common within the young coaches that I speak with. Um, I had a, a a handful of, or many of my clients are also coaches themselves. And so uh, some of them are been in the game uh, for a while within their coaching. Some of them are very early and it's very easy now because I know that when we started, it wasn't as prevalent uh, from an online coaching space perspective. Um, but now you've got so many people and business coaches being like, you can make 10K your first month working with me. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's a, a lot of money, especially when you can only pull one or two clients onto your roster, you're immediately going to inquire or feel lesser than within your service because of that you know, um, external source of information. And so uh, when you're looking at things and just being committed to uh, the process of, of getting results and, and providing that service, that's where you're going to see the benefit. And it's not a um, 
it's not a sprint, it's a marathon for sure, especially if it's something that you want to do and you have a passion to uh, to do within your life and your career and those different things. It's something where you really want to take just the, the day-to-day approach and not get so uh, consumed by external sources of like, you can make this much money, you should be making this much money, this person's doing this, this person's doing that, and just focusing on the day-to-day. So I think that's a lot of what we'll talk about today. Yeah, and would you say that with those long-term goals of being a able to fall in love with the journey and the process of it is a big part, but also having incremental goals along the way to kind of get that hit of uh, dopamine, so to speak, as well as just that feeling of achieving a goal. Yeah, I I think that um, the beautiful thing within our service is something that we have incremental goals with each person. So as you see packages conclude, you can see the person transform from their first check-in to their final check-in. And that's very gratifying to be able to help that one person because if the mission is simply to help as many people as you possibly can, that's one person added to that list. Um, And something like within our, you know, service is that we do so much from a social media standpoint that we have a, an impact on each person in different ways. And I think that that's really cool too. Like we have the immediate impact within our one-on-one clients, a very uh, intimate, detailed impact. But the other individuals that see us from a social media standpoint get us kind of in these bite-sized pieces, which I find to be really cool as well. So I think that having those checkpoints is very helpful. Yeah. And would you say that when it comes to your goals, so like baseball, or let's go ahead and use competing because that fits both of you, sports fit both of you too. But what does it look like when you have to change your goal, especially when you maybe didn't expect that that goal was going to change? If it was something that you thought was going to be in there for the long haul, what does it look like when it comes to changing those goals that maybe they don't no longer serve you, or maybe it's just time for the next goal? What does that look like? quite daunting. Um, I would say that it's challenging, especially from shifting from a sport for me that I had invested so much of my life and time. It was a massive part of my identity when I stopped playing as well as it was a cornerstone in the relationship that I have with my dad and still to this day is a big part of our relationship. So telling him that I was no longer going to play was probably the most difficult part for me personally. Um, And then also the identity shift of like, I'm no longer a a baseball player. And so I think that the identity aspect, as well as the individuals that you've, um, I guess, depended on within that goal or, or people who have really supported you in that, that's very challenging and feeling like a I guess you feel like a a small fish in a really big sea at that point, whereas maybe in the other goal that you had or or thing that you were accomplishing, you felt kind of like a a boss or you felt like a, a big fish in a small sea type situation. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. And Austin, would you say like when it comes to reaching those goals that it is important to set new goals or do you feel like you kind of finish up a goal and kind of sit in the time frame before you set those next goals? What would you say is either the most helpful for you or what you've seen with clients? Yeah. And I I think I will go back and draw to, um, again, like if you don't naturally gravitate towards it, I think you should set a goal in it. And, you know, for me and transitioning through different life goals, uh, you know, stop stopping our uh, sports when I was in high school uh, and choosing not to continue even p- in parts of high school when my career was very promising and even the prospects of going on to play in college, I uh, just turned that down and became something of, again, just disappointing everyone who's in your mind. You're just disappointing everyone that has always looked up uh, to you for that goal or did everything in their power, dedicated years and years and years of their life, r- decades really, to facilitate you reaching that goal that you've always had. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, kind of don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's something that it's kind of soul crushing um, to you. And it can be really, really tough, right? And that doesn't have to be sports in high school. It doesn't have to be any of that stuff. But any of those goals that you've been pursuing <clears throat> right? Whether it's been for yourself or for other people or for both, it can be really, really hard to transition. And so 
it's sort of, um, I will get back to the, the main question here, but I, I do think it's really important to, you know, one thing that's really helped me out in my life is learning how to learn, right? And I, I think the same process on understanding how to actually learn new things translates into every facet of anything you could learn, right? So I would take the same approach now as to learn a new subject within the health and fitness field as I would on becoming a pilot or becoming any, anything else, right? I would take the same approach. It's like, I have to, I have to do baseline study, create a foundation of knowledge. Then I have to do more nuanced contextual research and get experience within that field or area. And then again, it's just sort of doing the daily task, staying consistent with that, you know, reapplying myself, you know, so on and so forth. And I think that's the same thing as goal setting. So originally, I think we sort of fall into these natural goals that are placed in our lives, you know, whether it's up to us or not, right? So I think sports in my life was put there way before I had any conscious decision towards playing sports. Like I, I started playing sports when I was four and a half, five years old. And so it's like, this is just what I do. And this is what my family does. And this is what my brother does. This is what I do. And, you know, I play three or four sports a year, year round it's never not practicing on something it's never not pursuing something right and i think when that's taken away for the first time and you make a conscious conscious decision for the first time to say hey i don't actually want to pursue this anymore right and that for me that took you know almost 20 years <laughs> um but it, it's one of those things or 16 years of count like when i was playing sports whatever um but the object of that goal of, of pursuing that goal that whether you had it it was your idea to, to pursue it or not you were still pursuing a goal right so whether it was alex's idea to start playing baseball like he continuously got better at baseball that was always the goal right and then when he decided that that was no longer the goal he i'm going to speak for him here he took the same principles that he did to get really good at baseball to get really good at lifting weights, get really good at coaching people online and in person, really good at X, Y, and Z, right? Really good at breaking down complex topics and portraying them to be more simple. And all of those things to me are the same, right? Like how you learn is how you learn. How you set goals and pursue goals is how you learn and, or how you set goals and pursue goals. Like it's all the same to me. So I think if you take it, that's helped me in that approach because it's taken the, uh, it's taken what seems to be this big thing of, oh, it's a new goal. It's something I'm super unfamiliar with. It, it sort of breaks down those walls and those barriers of, of being something new and scary to, hey, I've done this countless times with other things. I want to pursue this. I know what I have to do. I know how to learn. I know how to set goals. I know how to pursue goals. I know how to tick the boxes to each data to, to, do the daily weekly monthly things that i need to do to get to this goal in six to eight to 12 months i just need to repeat that process with this new thing right and i i think again going back to you the main question is it important to to set goals i absolutely think it's important to set goals especially and even more so if you're trying to pursue a goal that you don't naturally gravitate towards in your daily life right so if you don't naturally go wake up and are revved to go to the gym or revved to, you know, make conscious decisions and intelligent decisions around your food and fitness, then you got some goal setting to make. You got some goal setting to create and you got some goals to pursue, right? Um, but if you're someone who naturally gravitates towards it, then you may need less goals. I, I mean, I don't know, but it, it is contextual to the individual. But if you aren't someone that does, then I think it's important. Yeah. And goals just help guide your focus. Exactly what Austin is saying here. And I know that some of my past goals, a lot of them were um, school related or academic related of I wanted to be a valedictorian at my high school. I wanted to graduate college in three years. I wanted to accomplish these different things. And I needed to have that focus to really guide that momentum and being able to speak them out loud and again, build out a plan for them. Because if I had never said out loud, I want to get a 4.0 or 
I want to be the valid Victorian, then I'm really not going to have the goals or the processes set up to achieve that. And I'm just going to be bouncing around. And so being able to have those goals in place and then obviously competing was a huge goal of mine and being able to continuously improve my physique. And I think it's really important when we talk about goals changing of being able to realize when a goal no longer serves you. And that doesn't mean that you didn't accomplish the goal or you failed in reaching the goal. It's being able to be reflective and self-aware enough to realize that, again, that goal is no longer serving you. So with that, I want to talk about the goals that are serving us right now and being able to talk specifically about our fitness goals since we all have been on our fitness journeys for multiple years now. How many years for each of us is it? Oh, a, a decade. I don't know. It's a while. Yeah, I would have to count it out a while. Um, our goals have obviously changed over that time. And so I thought it would be cool for you guys to hear what it's like after someone who has been working towards physique goals or fitness goals for about a decade and what our goals look like now. So I think Austin being able to kick it off of telling us kind of what your goals are right now within your physique and within fitness. I don't like the smug smile that Alex is in here. <laughs> I'm just so curious what he's going to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, too. I, I think that um, my goal right now is just the, the simplicity of getting consistent again, getting on track again, and, and getting into something that I thoroughly enjoy pursuing. And again, like we, we constantly revisit these, these identity conversations, right? Someone, speaking for myself, someone who's, only identified as an athlete my entire life or someone of a I identified as a physical a physical being right not intellectual and the first time that I transitioned those goals from the physical to the intellectual was a huge change for me and that's when I went that's when I quit uh essentially stepped away from sports went into college uh my whole life I just assumed that I would go to college to play sports and that's the way that my life was going at the time leading up to that point. And then when I chose not to do that, and I'm, I remember stepping on campus that first time with the realization of like, I'm just here as a small fish in a big pond, as Alex mentioned earlier. And no one knows me here. No one knows who I was. No one knows anything about me, which initially was like is that that's kind of scary i think but then as i got into it i was like this is actually super liberating this is something that i've actually i think been looking forward to because i think a lot of our goals that are presumably set for us throughout our life that we aren't consciously making that decision to pursue that goal are a lot of times put on you put onto you by other people and and who you're surrounded by right so my whole life, you know, my parents got me into sports, my grandparents got me into sports, and then every single coach that I had from here on, there on out, every decision was based around, well, are we optimizing your game? Are, are you practicing? Are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? All, no one really, I mean, of course people cared that I was a kid, but like, it was more of the decision around, is he doing everything he can to be better at this sport, right? And that's what mo most of my life has been pursuing is getting better at individual things uh, or specific skills uh, related to sports. And the first time that changed into an intellectual pursuit, that was a huge, huge shift for me. And that was the first time that I ever saw my physical uh, pursuit of something take a back seat, which was massive. And during that time, I had to sort of start to readjust my relationship with my fitness with my health with my my physical self right because i was pursuing my intellectual self pretty pretty much for the first time so i was discovering this new part of me that you know was expressed through through the intellectual pursuits rather than the physical ones and and then i got into when i felt comfortable enough with the intellectual ones um you know i set a goal to get a 4.0 my first year of college coming out of high school absolutely not doing that, um, you know, and, and achieved, I, I think I had like a 395 or something my first year that I got an A minus that just wrecked my life. Um, but I was so stoked about that because I went into college, I took the hardest classes I could that year. And I, I was like, I'm going to prove this to myself. I'm going to prove this to my grandfather. I'm going to prove this to my parents that I'm not going to end up back home on the couch, 
not in school. Like I'm not going to do that. I could tell that there was a part of everyone in my life that was like, hey, if that happens, it's okay, dude. Like you're good, you're not a failure. Um, but for me, that was like, no, that means I failed and I'm not failing. Um, and I need to prove this to myself. And so once I started, once I did that and I proved that to myself that, hey, I could do this new thing and I could do it really well if I put my mind to it, I put my effort towards it and I put the same principles towards it as I did throughout the rest of my life with sports. And then I got into uh, competing. Um, it was like my second, second year of college. I got into uh, competing in bodybuilding and that was a new transition back to the physical, but in a much, much different way. Uh, and I did that through basically my last year of, of college, which was 2016, and competed through all that time, had some success there, had a lot of fun, learned a lot of stuff about, learned a lot of new things about myself. And then when I stopped competing, that was another huge decision because I was saying once again, hey, I'm leaving this sole physical pursuit of this thing yet again or of a specific skill yet again. But thankfully I'd been there before with when I stepped into to university, when I was like, hey, I'm stepping away from the physical and going to the intellectual. I stepped away from the physical yet again after stopping uh, competing. And it wasn't as scary that time, but I was still super confused. And, and honest, to be honest, like since I stopped competing in 2016, you know, really kind of in my head, I stopped competing like early 2017, probably realistically, um, cause I wasn't quite sure. And I'll be honest, like since then I've sort of been clawing for a new perspective on the entire situation. So basically from 2017 to, to now, it's just been a pursuit of <clears throat> transitioning what is health and what is fitness and what is my body to me outside of sports, outside of bodybuilding. Um, and as I grow older as an adult, as we all do, you're learning new things about your body that it doesn't quite react the same as it used to. It doesn't quite respond to certain variables the same as it used to. Certain things are harder than they used to be physically. Uh, and all those things are super humbling. <laughs> and so um, from, from, I guess from 2017 to now, I guess my, my main goal has been, how do I transition from bodybuilding into the rest of my life without it? And like stepping on stage bodybuilding, not like pursuing bodybuilding oriented goals of improving my physique, but like stepping on stage, specifically training day in and day out to be judged on my physique uh, into a life where I can't imagine stepping on another stage. So um, that's been a huge transition yet again, but thankfully I've been there before as far as transitioning goals and understanding what I need to do day in and day out. But to be honest, that hasn't made it much, it hasn't made it really any easier for me mentally and physically to adjust to this new way of of life as an adult without really any pursuit uh of towards something so my goal i guess now is to start to regain what that is for me and what i want from that you know and and i've thought about i've thought about certain things um pursuing certain physical goals again you know competitions of, of more physically uh based more on the physical rather than the, than the aesthetic are based more on the athletic more than the aesthetic um but to be honest it's just i guess to round out my my full answer here it's just to pursue something again physically that i thoroughly enjoy that that thoroughly challenges me um but through that pursuit i'm currently at the stage of getting myself back into a shape that I see as non-negotiable for myself. And I, I think there's these physical parts of ourselves that are, th there's these parts of ourselves that at least from my own, my own viewpoint on it, that are sort of these non-negotiables within our life. And the way that I want to look and feel physically to me, it, it's always been a non-negotiable, but it was always a non-negotiable that was very naturally taken care of through my actions and other things. But now it's not like mm -hmm. if I don't actively pursue it with intention every single day, week in and week out, 
it will absolutely fall by the wayside. And that's what I've seen over the past four years <laughs> of just like, hey man, this isn't like it used to be, dude. Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wake up, you know? And and so I guess I'm just waking up more and more and realizing that these things are non-negotiable for me. And it's it's a different approach, but it's the same process, you know? And and so getting out of your own way is a huge thing and and showing up for yourself and doing the things that you always doing the things that you tell yourself you want to do and and just doing those day in and day out week in and week out <clears throat> that a result does come from that and obviously the actions you take leads you towards the result you're you're searching for right and so um that's where i'm at currently in my fitness journey yeah and we actually were just talking about that last night about um feeling the effects of age and your body just not doing or things falling by the wayside if you're not putting that effort in so i'll let alex touch on that in a moment because i know he was expressing that but i will say that even though it's been five years of trying to figure out what it is for you i will say that i feel at least from my perspective that over these past five years you've done a lot of troubleshooting to figure out what those non-negotiables are and what health is to you has really shifted from what it used to mean. So I feel like you're really settling into what does health mean to me um, and what are those things that I need to do? And then, okay, once I get those nailed down, then I can start compounding or start searching for these other aspects or these other activities that are going to challenge me more athletically because I have this foundation down of what are my basics. And I think that that is really powerful to hear. And that's a huge reason I wanted to talk about it is fitness goals don't have to look like I I want to get on stage. It can look like I need to figure out what health means to me and being able to figure out what those non-negotiables are. Well said. I agree. Um, so looking at my goals, um, I am someone who has to dig into the extremes to figure out where my kind of balance or middle ground is going to be. So in that, over the last four years, I would say that my extreme thing that I um, just completely submerged myself into was the the coaching and only focusing on that and focusing on the clients and um, putting myself kind of as a backseat rider to the individuals that I was coaching. And that paid massive dividends in terms of uh, building physique development and those different factors. But my health definitely took a, a hit within that where it was probably the worst body composition that I had gotten into as, as well as um, the most out of out of love, I would say I was with training in general. Um, and training is something that I have a burning passion for uh, to this day and those different things. And it was something that I was losing that passion for a, a multitude of different reasons. And so um, over the past two years, I've had the opportunity to work with Adam Miller from N1 Education. He's been my one-on-one -on -one coach. And there's been phases in that time frame where uh, I'm very diligent. And then there's phases where I fall into that same scenario where it's clients first, Alex second. And so throughout this year, one of my big goals when I started the year was to stop that. There's certainly going to be, I shouldn't say stop that, have that be less and less frequent. And so having small pockets of time where we had national shows and those different things where it's impossible to have me in the same level or, or of priority of um, those I'm working with and have those be those small pockets and have a greater percentage of the year with me as the priority and my health as the priority. And I am proud to say that I, I feel as though that this year I've stuck to that. Um, I will say that as a, a recent goal for me, is that we just recently went to the N1 Practical, and this was an opportunity for me to train with Austin for the first time in a long time, um, and for the first time in my life, I'm catching up to him from a strength perspective. <laughs> Don't know how happy he is of that, but I am very thrilled. Thus, <laughs> I spent the eight weeks leading into that practical, um, building up from a caloric standpoint, building up a little bit from a body weight standpoint, and uh, allowing for myself to really hone in on training, and it was kind of a catalyst for me to reignite that passion for training because I was looking forward to training with him as well as potentially doing a rep or two more than him in some of these exercises, which we did keep track. And I honestly think that we ended on a tie. I think we tied. Yeah, I think yeah, we tied. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We tied and I, well, I missed the last day because yeah, whatever. But anyway, 
being there and getting to train with him just continued to um, light that fire more and more for me. And so it's been something over the last couple of months where I've really reignited things. And I'm excited because right now I'm heading into a dieting phase, which has been humorous because this is the first <laughs> dieting phase that I have been in. And Sue's laughing. This is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> you guys, I wish that I would record some of the things that he says <laughs> just to put them on absolute blast. So p uh, one thing with me is that I, I, I enjoy to complain. It's, it's something that's humorous to me. <laughs> yeah. And then also if I get laughs with the complaining, I just kind of like push it even further. I start to embellish more and more. And so it's one of the things that I could really make Sue laugh with. And so <laughs> in that, the last, I've only been dieting since Friday. Yeah. Okay. So it's Tuesday now. <laughs> so, so physiologically, I kid you not. There have been yet. multiple times in these past five days. He was like, I'm at the point in dieting now, or I'm at the point in the diet where I'm like, you're five days in. What do you Listen, mean? It's tough. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I'm getting into this dieting phase because we have this, we have a really cool experience uh, or a really cool opportunity for physique development. Austin and I are going to be doing this project. It's going to be super cool. And I want to be in shape for that because it's on camera just like this. So with that, I'm dieting for it. And as well as it's just been fun to have have a little bit of strain and, and discipline within my intake because really where my food was prior to this, it was all centered around just being as strong as possible. So it doesn't necessarily matter if I'm adding body fat as long as my numbers in the gym are improving in those different factors. So this is the first time I've had a dieting phase, a legitimate dieting phase in probably at least two years. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been a new experience. And I will say, and this is what I tell my clients as well as myself, <laughs> is that if you get through the first 14 days of a dieting phase, things start to kind of smooth out. You kind of figure out what the, um, it kind it becomes more routine for you in terms of the intake and those different factors. Um, and so, yeah, I'm and getting into like a dieting you phase. adjust to the fact of like, I'm having less food. Yeah. And <laughs> it becomes less funny for my wife. So then I, I stopped complaining a little bit more because it's not as humorous to her, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is summertime and with summer comes vacations and needing to look like a smoke show at the beach. And that is probably you and wanting to get in the best shape of your life. With Physique Development, our one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to do that for you. So head over to physiquedevelopment.com and inquire to work with one of our coaches. Uh, well, things that they pointed out that I just want to highlight a little bit more is being able to talk about priorities. So when Austin was talking about going to college and having to shift that priority of being on his physique, being on his performance, and now having to be on his intellect, that is very, very important because everything in life has a priority list. And you have to be aware of what your priorities are because, again, it goes back to your effort and expectations. Because if you have your priority list and you're very clear on what your top priorities are and what order they go in, not only does it make scheduling your day easier because you can really prioritize the things that are a top priority, but it also gives you more clarity as you go through life. Because when we're looking at different goals, if Austin were to keep the same headspace of my physical, my aesthetic goals hold the same priority as they used to, as he's going into college, he is going to have a really hard time because his physique isn't going to stay the same because he's not putting the same effort towards it. And he's putting a lot of effort towards school because two things cannot be number one priority. And that doesn't make it bad. It doesn't mean that if your fitness isn't your number one priority, that you're not dedicated and you don't love fitness. It's just being able to be realistic and set out those priorities so that you're able to see and gauge your progress on those priorities as well. So I had a client who had extreme goals within her job in her career. And she crushed them through our time together, absolutely annihilated them. And within her physique goals, she made great progress forward. But she had expressed to me, I feel like I'm not where I want to be. And I was like, hey, you made your priorities and your career was a very strong priority for you. Doesn't mean that I think you don't care about fitness or that you didn't try very hard. You did. You put in a lot of effort. But when we're looking at the time dedicated to your career and your craft versus the time dedicated to fitness, we have to be aware that one of those was taking a top priority. So if you're more successful in that one, that's because it was a priority for you. And so I think that's really important to lay 
out of being able to, and that's why one of the things within SMART goals is what's realistic or attainable, uh, because it is important to really make sure that, of course, you can dream big. It doesn't all have to be like, oh, what can I accomplish tomorrow that's realistic? You can dream as big as you want, but being able to plot out a plan that is going to be realistic. Another thing here is talking about those non-negotiables. And I think that's a really important place to start when it comes to goals. And if you do have a larger goal, again, being able to have those smaller goals that step towards it. So I put on Instagram my August goals. And I had a few people comment saying that they loved the idea and they wanted to make their own. I had a few clients include it in their check-in. And I had someone comment and say, I love all of these because these are so realistic. They still required my effort 100%. And I'll list out what some of them were for August, which was to lean into friendships more, which took effort because I'm a homebody and I can just stay in my own space. It's not the greatest for me, but I can do it. And I've pushed myself to be social and to go do things, even if it is not the absolute most ideal schedule for myself. Another was to get eight to 10K steps a day, which I have crushed as well. Now, there were a few days that I got below that, but it was circumstantial and I was able to understand that my body needed rest in those moments. Uh, Other goals were to train three to four times a week, which I've been able to accomplish. Um, And I'm forgetting the the exact rest of them off the top of my head because I don't have them written down in my notes. But oh, get two outside walks a day, one with the dogs. Um, So those have been things that I have knocked out of the park. And those have been really great for me because especially shifting out of competing, I didn't want to have to put all this pressure on myself when I knew that my physique was no longer a number one priority still a priority, but competing, your physique has to be number one for you to be competitive and for you really to be worth your time. There's no reason to spend that much time on something for it to not be your number one priority. And so with that, as I'm switching out of it, I needed goals surrounding my body that were going to make me feel better and also help with my body composition and the aesthetic look of it, but really take off that pressure of you're trying to go into an improvement season and improve X, Y, Z. I knew that for my full purpose and my full um, brain power and to support the other goals I have outside of fitness, I needed to make these more manageable bite-sized goals. So I don't have a specific, oh, this is my... 100% end goal within my physique. And Alex had even asked me recently within a check-in of, hey, what are your your goals right now? I need some direction to make sure I get view direction that you need. And I was like, I just want to feel good. I want to really make sure that I am prioritizing my digestion, prioritizing my steps, my water intake, foods that make me feel good, while also redefining what my relationship is with fitness. That's another thing Austin said, is that relationship change as he had to redefined what fitness meant in his life and kind of how that settled into his life. And same with Alex and baseball. And so I had to have personal conversations and this goes within switching goals or setting new goals or being able to recognize when a goal no longer serves you is I had to redefine what my relationship was with fitness because it was changing so drastically from the relationship that I had to have with my physique and fitness for competing. And so I had to be really reflective on that and figure out and give myself some space to um, do some trial and error. You're not always going to get it right on the first time. So if you are goal setting and maybe you set goals and you're like, I'm killing it, I'm on my way, and then you realize that those goals aren't the best suited for you, take that as a learning experience. It is not you're back where you're started. You're going into it with more knowledge of how to set yourself up for success and to make sure that you're in a good spot. Um, Do you want to kind of speak to some of the body image challenges that you've faced post-show, like shifting out of competing, not going into that improvement season and kind of giving some people some insight on that? Yeah, I... um, It was interesting because directly post-show, I probably felt like the best I had felt in a very long time. I loved that weight was coming back on me because I felt kind of like sucked dry and I felt that I was not too lean. I was the leanness that I needed to be for that sport. And that's something I was talking about with Alex the other day of recognizing that that body served me to be successful in that area of my life. And my body has to look different to serve me in a different way, again, based on my goals and priorities. And so it was 
Um, and throughout that prep, that's the absolute best I've ever looked competing wise. And the reason I make that little side of from competing wise is I don't want in my head to um, cement like that's the best you ever looked. Because then again, I'm going to hold an unfair expectation of like what I should look like or what the best is for me when that was the best with that structure and what my goal was at that time. So I looked incredible all throughout competing. I loved the way that I looked. I loved what we accomplished together. And then I loved how I looked directly post-show. I had a lot of energy. We moved food up pretty fast. I was enjoying resting some more as well as training and being able to get after things. Um, but then it came about um, in the past month or two of some pretty big body image issues. And for myself, it's not that I've never dealt with body image. I mean, I am a I'm a 27-year-old female. The era that I grew up in was all about being stick thin. You only exercise to be thin. It was all about having double zeros, low-rise jeans. It was something to grow up in of that diet culture. And so I've definitely had body image issues, but I haven't struggled with them a ton in the six years that I've been competing because I had a goal and I had an outline and I had an understanding of what the next steps were. So that provided a lot of clarity so that I was able to have proper expectations of what I was going to look like and what I was going to feel like. And then coming into this post-show time, and this is the first time in over six years that I haven't had the goal to get back on stage. And it hasn't been my main focus of I am in an improvement season to get back on stage. And the hardest thing is I'm having to lean in and trust myself more. And I do trust myself. But after having a plan for so long, it's difficult to know if I'm going in the right direction. Um, so that's probably the hardest part is when I'm on a plan. So even days that I maybe didn't feel the best within prep or um, didn't wasn't the happiest with how I looked, I always knew I'm following the plan. I'm executing the plan. Things are going to come back around. And within dieting, I know from a coach perspective and a client perspective that your body isn't always going to have this perfect um, trajectory down. It's going to have a trend down, but there are going to be times where maybe your body looks a certain way before you lose fat or glycogen, and you're not going to like every single day how your body looks. And so I am trying to remind myself of that as I'm going in the opposite direction of there are going to be times that I don't love the way that my body looks, or there's going to be times where I'm not the happiest with how my physique is, but I need to figure out what those non-negotiables are to make sure that I'm making myself happy in these moments and again being able to understand the variables so we had travel plus I had my cycle plus a few other factors in place and some pretty high stress and other things going on within family and business and I was very upset um, probably about a week and a half ago of just not knowing what to do because I hadn't felt that way in my body in a long time and being able to again, focus on what are the things that are going to make me feel good as a whole, then redefining and reminding myself what body I need right now to accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish, as well as being realistic with myself that I do not want to go into a diet right now, nor am I in the place to go into one. So I can't ask for my body to be smaller if I'm not willing to put in the, um, I'm not willing to put in the dieting time right at this moment to get to that place and being okay with the fact that I might not feel okay every day right now, but I'm going to feel okay in the future and being able to hold on to that because I'm doing the things that I know I need to do right now, even if I don't have as much direction. And I will say from a, a competitor standpoint, if you lost your menstrual cycle during the prep itself, and then you're in the process of restoring your cycle, and the the first month you start to have some symptoms, but don't actually have um, a a true bleed, and then you go to another month, and the same thing happens. That is really tough because you're having the symptoms of the the bloating and the distension and and uh, potential uh, digestion issues, energy, uh, cramps. the cramps, the fluid retention. All those things are happening, and I feel as though that that is one of the more defeating things because you feel the symptoms. Um, 
that sh- you know should be part of having your cycle. And then you go another month and you have all that. And it, it's very, it feels very aggressive. Some of the worst um, symptoms that you've had or, or side effects, however you want to label it. And, and then the cycle doesn't come. And that's a very defeating or a very challenging moment. And that's when you really have to lean into the process as a whole and, and understand that you have faith in the individual that you're working with as, as well as you're on the right path and you're doing all the things that are within your control to get your cycle back and and continue to press on. And that's not a time for you to stray away from the protocols and feel as though that, um, I have to do something different. I've got to implement this supplement. I've got to implement uh, X, Y, and Z. It's, it's a matter of staying on the, the path and the cycle is going to come when the body is, is ready to have it. Yeah. And I think that being able to reassure myself and turn to Alex or my friends and ask for that reassurance if I can't give it to myself, um, because there's been days where I'm able to talk to myself and be like, these are the variables, Sue. This is what it is. You're a coach. You understand this. Give it time. You'll feel better. And when I can talk myself out of it, great. And then I'm in a good spot and I'm good to keep moving forward a a few days. But there's been a few days where I can't get out of my own headspace and I just ask for a little bit of affirmation from Alex or from one of my friends um, and being able to know like, hey, it's going to be a-okay and like just hold on to that. And also I hold on to the fact of no matter what happens of like, let's say that I get to a place where I'm extremely uncomfortable with my physique and I don't like the way that it looks. I know I can always diet and fix it. I know that we as a team have the resources and the intelligence to get me to where I want to go within my physique. And right now, I need to trust what is going on and be okay with it, give myself some time, and then figure it out from there. And I've found some peace in that, of course, of being able to just trust what's going on and being able to trust myself more and more. Um, That doesn't make the bad days any easier, but it does make the process as a whole um, a lot more doable because I'm, again, not having these unrealistic expectations for myself. I'm aware of what my body needs at this moment and what those non-negotiables are, and I'm really honing in on those and making the people around me aware of what those are or even aware when I'm having a bad body image day, which has just been helpful for my headspace. I've always been that way of like, I need to vocalize things for it to kind of get off my headspace. And so when I'm having a really bad body image day, I'll just text Alex or McKenzie. I'll be like, I'm just struggling today. Like I literally just need to say it out loud because I need to know that like I can say it and that's going to be okay. So transitioning out of competing is, is a really hard thing, right? So if, if you are listening, um, and you've are in this phase of, I did once compete or got ready for a show and it didn't happen because maybe of maybe COVID or something. And you, you still feel these like post competing blues. Um, it, it, not only is it in the, in the physical, but it's in the mental and emotional as well as Sue's, you know, giving you a, an insight into, right. And this essentially like, that's more or less what I was saying over the, you know, in my own way over the past four years, like since 2017, like, it's been the same, you know, cycle for me, you know, and and I think that anyone who's ever competed uh, and been really into that, and that's really defined your identity for years and years and years, and you s- just got used to that, right? That became your North Star, that became the horizon you're, you're constantly working toward, and that became your identity as a, as a person walking throughout the, throughout life on earth, like, it becomes a really challenging thing to to change and shift, right? But as you as you learn as well, it it is what it is. This is the new direction you're heading, and you're going to be met with challenges that were just as hard as the challenges you were met with when you first started to compete and wanted to get into that sort of shape. They're different. They're much different. But I think the challenge is a challenge, right? And and not knowing that you can overcome a challenge is important, right? You've done it before and you can do it again, right? And I think anyone who's ever competed, that is a great way to sort of look at it. At least that's been helpful for me is, look, you have the control as Sue said, like I've I've also found a ton of comfort and I know regardless of where this goes, I have the skill set and I have the people around me that can help me get to where I would like to be eventually. And there is a lot of comfort in that. And I, I understand that 
the opposite of that is true too, where if you don't understand that you have the control to change, that could be extremely daunting. That could be extremely discouraging to not have that confidence of control, right? And, or that locus of control on the situation. And understand again, like if you are in a situation like that, there are people who can help either, you know, surround yourself with people who can help and surround yourself with people who are encouraging you towards that thing, right? To a healthy degree, obviously, but are encouraging you towards that thing or are around you where you can talk about that thing outwardly without being judged negatively or being put into a situation where you have to just bury every emotion that you have because you feel it's un, uh, like it's not valid, right? Because it's just like, oh, well, I was just competing and now I'm not. And okay. And it's just like, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's, it's, that's deep. That's a deep thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's the same identity crisis as I can identify with is going from, okay, I'm an athlete to I'm not an athlete to I'm a competitor and a good one at that. And now I'm not a competitor. So who am I, you know, and who is my physical being and, and how do I outwardly express that? And how is, how is how I'm outwardly expressing that currently match up with the expectation of, that I actually have of myself? And that I would like to, the goals that I would actually like to pursue and, and get closer and closer to, right? And, and that constant back and forth, you know, 99% of that's happening within your head, you know, whether that's daily or weekly or monthly or whatever it is, that those battles are constantly occurring in your head, right? Um, and it's a really challenging thing. So if you're, if you're, I don't know, I've been thinking a lot about that over the past four years of, you know, I know there's a I've not only talked to them, but I know there's so many other people who struggle a lot with finding a new identity, a new, a new version of themselves after the stage, after they get away from competing in such an aesthetic sport that you're judged on by your physical appearance, not only on stage, but throughout your entire existence, because how you look in your off season is reflective of how you're going to look in season and on stage and how you look after your you know stage you're judged on and how, how you look three months after stage you're judged on and like there's just continuously judged physically 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 and it's a really hard thing to, to mentally have when you're in it you're like oh this is just my life like i'm I, I breed on the competition like this is great whatever it's still challenging but you're in it and, and you're committed to it but when you're out of it you're like you can no longer lean on the fact that you're in it and competitive towards it, you have to sort of separate yourself from that and re-identify with this part of yourself. And it's a really, really challenging thing uh, to, to pursue and to, and to do. And just know that even people like, you know, the three of us here are constantly trying to work on that part of ourselves post-competing and, and trying to figure out what that is for ourselves and setting new goals and, and setting new expectations and goals of ourselves and also to uh, constantly audit our hierarchy of importance or our priorities or non-negotiables or whatever you want to kind of say there um, throughout the process. So just know it's a, it is a challenging thing. And if you are struggling through it, there's people that you can definitely chat with to, to help. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys liked learning about our goals as well as being able just to hear some different things about goal setting and some other things about goal setting that really helps you see where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are and where you can improve. And like I said, it gives you that focus. It can even give you that self-confidence because it's that feeling of self-mastery and being able to know that you accomplish something that you set out to do. And it can make you better at making decisions because you have to make your decision and priority list. You you have to lay out what the steps are to get your goals. And so you get better at decision making along the way. So I challenge you to kind of sit down and think about what are my priorities right now um, within my job, within fitness, within my life, and what are those goals that I have, whether they are going to be really small and being able to just be something that you can implement. It might be a challenge, but being able to get that started or a bigger overarching goal and starting to break down the more manageable pieces in the meantime. So 
If your goal is to nail down some foundations, then definitely go check that check out episode 73 and 74, which I did with Coach Courtney, and we talk about the foundations for a healthy lifestyle and the ways to implement them. So definitely go give that one a listen or watch, um, and we will catch you on the next one.